Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Michael Mann's hockey stick shows that the period from about 1850 to 1910 was the coldest of the past millennium. Yet history shows us that glaciers were retreating very rapidly around the world during that time. Here's an article from 1903, Melting Glaciers. Observations of the alpine glaciers during a series of years have supplied proof that these great ice streams have long been in process of recession. Then this article went into some detail about Dr. Engel's research at Greenland's largest glacier, the Jacobs Haven Glacier. This same article was also printed in Scientific American during 1904. Dr. Engel's research and subsequent research show that the Jacobshaven Glacier in Greenland retreated very rapidly from about 1850 until 1964. But since 1964, the retreat has slowed way down, and in recent years, the glacier is actually growing. So according to Michael Mann's hockey stick, Greenland's largest glacier was rapidly melting during the coldest years of the last millennium. And now that temperatures have skyrocketed out of control, the Jacobshaven Glacier is growing once again. So if we believe Michael Mann, we also have to believe that glaciers melt when it's cold and they grow when it's much warmer. Here's another article from 1903 talking about the rapid retreat of glaciers in the Alps. Some of them were retreating as much as 50 feet a day. So according to Michael Mann, glaciers in the Alps retreat very rapidly when it's cold. Here's an article from 1932 talking about the rapid retreat of the Ross Ice Shelf in Antarctica since about the middle of the 19th century. The Ross Ice Shelf had receded at least 30 miles since it was first seen and surveyed, and this process may have been going on for centuries. So according to Michael Mann, Antarctica was melting very rapidly during the coldest years of the last millennium. The largest glacier in Alaska at Glacier Bay also retreated very rapidly during the 19th century. So according to Michael Mann, Alaska's glaciers were melting very rapidly during the coldest years of the last millennium. The glaciers in Glacier National Park melted very rapidly from the middle of the 19th century until about 1950, and then the melting slowed way down. 100 years ago, the glaciers in Glacier National Park were melting so quickly that experts predicted they would be gone by the year 1950. But the melt slowed way down after about 1950, and now there's evidence that the glaciers may actually be growing. This was the Ice Edge in 1991, and now it has expanded all the way over to here. So according to Michael Mann, glaciers in Glacier National Park melt very rapidly when it's cold, and they grow when it's much warmer. If all these glaciers around the world were melting when it was very cold during the 19th century, we might ask, when did they form? National Geographic wrote that the glaciers of the Alps from the 10th to the 16th centuries were much less extensive than at present and that horses were able to cross passes now considered difficult by mountaineers. So we know that the glaciers of the Alps largely formed after the 16th century and the period of time before that must have been much warmer. But Michael Mann has erased both the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age. His graph makes absolutely no sense compared with the real world. Prior to Michael Mann, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change used this graph, which showed a strong medieval warm period, much warmer than the present, and a very cold Little Ice Age. This graph made sense in the context of the glaciers. Breffa's reconstruction also made sense. It showed a very cold Little Ice Age when the glaciers formed, and then warming after that until about 1940. This was the period of time when glaciers were rapidly melting in Antarctica, Alaska, the Alps, and in the Rocky Mountains. We've seen in the maps of glacial retreat that melting slowed way down after about 1950, and this was also shown in Breffa's reconstruction as a strong cooling trend. There's lots of photographic evidence that glaciers melted very rapidly after the middle of the 19th century. Michael Mann's hockey stick makes no sense scientifically, but it shows what Al Gore wanted to see, so he has been handsomely rewarded with money. His net worth is reportedly over $5 million for doing some of the worst science in history. 
Dr. Tim Ball was a good friend of mine, and his story was the exact opposite. He was a very good scientist who criticized Michael Mann. Michael Mann doesn't like having his fraud exposed, so he sued Tim Ball with a frivolous lawsuit that went on for years. Eventually, the judge threw the case out, realizing that Michael Mann wasn't willing to substantiate his charges. Mann refused to produce any evidence at the trial because he knew his work wouldn't withstand any scrutiny. But Tim Ball's defense cost millions of dollars, and the judge in British Columbia ordered Michael Mann to pay for Tim Ball's expenses. Michael Mann's lawyer agreed to pay the expenses, but he has never done that. Michael Mann sent Tim Ball to an early grave due to the stress from this trial. And Mann refuses to give the money to the Ball family, which the court ordered and which Mann's lawyer agreed he would do. Michael Mann is a severely flawed human being, but academia loves him because he's good for their business. Glaciers don't lie, but Michael Mann and other climate academics do. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the climate scam for more than 15 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.